This believing man used his position to speak truth to a tyrant, to advise people to follow Musa alayhi salam. And you know, it is upsetting for a person when you're trying to call people towards something good and they're trying to call you towards their pathways of evil. He says, وَيَا قَوْمِ مَا لِي أَدْعُوكُمْ إِلَى النَّجَاءِ أَدْعُوكُمْ إِلَى النَّجَاءِ وَتَدْعُونَنِي إِلَى النَّارِ You're calling me towards the fire. How is it that I'm, I'm calling you towards something good? You're calling me towards something evil. In other words, I'm calling you to be forgiven by Allah. This is for your own sake. You are from my people and I am from amongst you. The most repeated story in the Quran is the story of Prophet Musa alayhi salam, Moses. And it's interesting to see all the different experiences that he had. He was sent to the most wicked of people in history. He was sent to Fir'aun, the Pharaoh. And Prophet Musa alayhi salam had to endure a lot throughout his experience. Something interesting takes place. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us in the Quran about an individual who is unnamed. So his legacy is powerful. His reward is unimaginable. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlighted this individual. And this was during the uh, moment in which there was a conversation between this man, the believing man from the family or the people of Fir'aun and Fir'aun himself. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the story in Surah Ghafir verse 28 onwards. The ayah begins with, and the story begins with the following. وَقَالَ رَجُلٌ مُؤْمِنٌ مِنْ آلِ فِرْعَوْنَ يَكْتُمُ إِيمَانَهُ A believing man from the people of Fir'aun. Some scholars say he was in fact a relative or even the cousin of Fir'aun. This person, يَكْتُمُ إِيمَانَهُ was hiding his faith uh, out of fear. What did he say? أَتَقْتُلُونَ رَجُلًا أَنْ يَقُولَ رَبِّيَ اللَّهُ Are you going to kill a man, Musa a.s. Because he says, Allah is my Lord. And then here he presents this believing man. Again, we don't know his name. He presents some persuasive reasons for not killing Musa a.s. and for considering his argument. So for example, he says, وَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ He has come to you with clear signs from your Lord. And there were many signs that had taken place. And then he says, if he's lying, then the lie will affect him. It's on him, it's his loss. But if he's telling the truth, then a calamity will befall us. And there were calamities that had befell the people before them. And then he says, Allah will not guide those who are transgressing and they are liars. Notice here, in the story of this individual, this believing man, he keeps saying to his people, Ya Qawmi, Ya Qawmi. For example, Ya Qawmi lakumul mulk al-yawm. Oh my people, oh my people. He's from amongst them. Sometimes one of the most impactful things you can do when you're advising someone is to call them with something that is close. Oh my dear brother, oh my dear sister, oh my family, oh my community, oh my people. And when you call upon them as such, it will have a greater emotional, persuasive impact, inshallah. He says, Later on in the story, he says, I fear for you. A day in which people will be crying and calling out to one another. And he says, there, there were people before us. Uh, he talks about the people from before, the people of Nuh, the people of Thamud. They were punished for uh, attacking their messenger. And then he says, oh my dear people, follow me. I will show you. I will lead you to the way of guidance. And then he says, Ya Qawmi, my people, innama hadi al hayatu dunya mata. This life is uh, an enjoyment. It is a fleeting, quick uh, illusion of, of pleasure. And then he says, Wa inna al akhirata hiya dar al qarar. And the hereafter is the home of settlement. That's where you're headed. This believing man used his position to speak truth to a tyrant, to advise people to follow Musa alayhi salam. And you know, it is upsetting for a person when you're trying to call people towards something good and they're trying to call you towards their pathways of evil. He says, وَيَا قَوْمِ مَا لِي أَدْعُوكُمْ إِلَى النَّجَاءِ أَدْعُوكُمْ إِلَى النَّجَاءِ وَتَدْعُونَنِي إِلَى النَّارِ You're calling me towards the fire. How is it that I'm, I'm calling you towards something good? You're calling me towards something evil. In other words, I'm calling you to be forgiven by Allah. This is for your own sake. You are from my people and I am from amongst you. And then at the very end, he says, فَسَتَذْكُرُونَ مَا أَقُولُ لَكُمْ You will remember what I say to you. I'm fast forwarding through this story. But most importantly is to notice how he calls upon his people, calls upon his people, calls upon his people. He speaks directly to Fir'aun. He challenges what's happening. He gives him a persuasive intellectual argument. And at the very end, he says to his people, you're going to remember what I said. You are going to remember. وَأُفَوِّضُ أَمْرِي إِلَى اللَّهِ Ultimately, I entrust my affairs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ بَصِيرٌ بِالْعِبَادِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all seeing of his servants. Allah saved him from their evil plans and their plots. 
And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَحَاقَ بِآلِ فِرْعَوْنَ سُوءُ الْعَذَابِ And the evil punishment took the people of Fir'aun. I want you to think about this believing man. This man was a believer. He hid his faith for a while. He started calling people towards the truth, used his platform for something good. What are you doing with the platform that you have? What are you doing with the situations, the networks, the contacts, the social media that you have? Are you utilizing that position, that blessing, that privilege for something beneficial? To call people towards something good? To stop people from doing the wrong thing? Or are you wasting an opportunity? Are you wasting potential? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us grateful for every position, every platform, every opportunity that we have. The people of Fir'aun, the, the, those who continue to follow Fir'aun and ignore Prophet Musa alayhi salam, they saw sign after sign after sign after sign and all of these signs from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they rejected them due to their arrogance. Finally, they chase Musa alayhi salam and the few followers, the believers that were with him. They chase them and they're basically trapped. You have the Red Sea behind you and the enemy in front of you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the miracle that took place with the splitting of the sea. I want you to imagine seeing this yourself. Imagine you're watching as a third party and you have a group of people with a messenger who showed them all the signs and proofs that they needed that this was truly a messenger of God. Every miracle you can imagine that, that was mentioned, imagine you saw it as well. Now the sea is splitting and he goes through, they, they're going through the, the split sea, they're going through the Red Sea. And right behind them, you have Fir'aun and the arrogant followers, those who are obeying Fir'aun blindly, choosing to pursue and kill. What kind of worldview, how much arrogance must you have for you to see the sea splitting for a man who showed you that he was truly a messenger of God and still try to chase him to kill him? How, how arrogant must a person be? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. They chased down Musa alayhi salam and the believers. And of course, they got out safely, the believers and Fir'aun and his followers drowned. His army drowned. And as he's drowning, then finally he tries to proclaim that he believes in the same Lord as Bani Israel. But by then it is too late. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us humility and allow us to accept the signs that are in our lives and the signs within us as well before it is too late. Accept the signs of change today because tomorrow is not guaranteed. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for all of our shortcomings. Allahumma amin.